We're here with Gareth Knight. Gareth is the director of Technovated and the founder of Tech for Africa. Gareth, tell us about what this conference is. Um, I think it's about inspiration in general. Um, the idea is to expose local people to people who have got really good experience from overseas to show them that if they want to, they can build really awesome stuff um, if they just put their mind to it and learn and then go out and do. It's been very interesting. I've had the opportunity to interview a lot of these speakers and sit in their sessions. They're very candid about the mistakes that have been made. Yeah. In the interviews, they've said that they're not, not surprised, but have realized that the talent is here. Talk a little bit more about talent, talk about C Camp, what that's all about, and how we're going to raise up more of that talent. The thing that became pretty clear to me for, you know, at least two or three years ago was that there was a definite um, gap in the funding model in, in Africa, in South Africa, where early stage funding wasn't happening. And that's because there isn't an exit for the early stage investor. Yes. And so what happens is that entrepreneurs feel that they have to have a success or they have to make a success first time around. Whereas if you go to the Valley or you go into the States, people fail two, three, four times mm -hmm. and then they hit success. And people understand failure as part of the process. And I think in South Africa we have a uh, very traditional conservative approach to failure in that you'd rather not do something than run the risk of failing. So if you were to say to big business or to investors um, just to shift their mindset, what would your message be? That, that failing is, is a good thing. You know, th there's the age-old example of Edison who did the, the light bulb where, where he says that he didn't he didn't succeed on the 10,000th time. He failed 9,999 9, and then succeeded on the 10,000th. You know, and it's the same with Tech for Africa. You know, we've been trying to do this for four years and it hasn't happened and now it's happened. And it's just through persistence and through keeping on trying. Yeah, one of the things that you've me recently mentioned was that um, you have to climb the mountain to see the view. And yeah. knowing you personally, I know this has been a long journey and a long road. Are you happy with the outcome so far? Very happy. It's the, the last couple of weeks have been pretty emotional, but yeah, very happy. It's, it's gone way better than I could have thought it than I thought it would, and the response seems to be really good. It's it's interesting to me that that you've attached a, an emotion and a personal journey to to this, and we see it throughout the the conferences. Um, vision for 2011 or vision going forward, what do you think Tech for Africa is about now? You know, technology, is, it really is an enabler if it's used in the right way. And so I think what we've got to do is, is figure out a way to keep this momentum and this buzz going so that people feel like it's not just a once-off or, a, you know, a, a, I don't know, like a yearly event that has no real relevance to them. And I think the key thing is, is that you have to have that learning component. So, you know, we want to try and do, well, we are going to do quarterly events. And my thinking is that if we can expose people to different skills and different learnings every quarter, yes. you know, then, then we're going to create an environment where people are learning because there's regular, regular, regular learning that's happening. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I think that's, that's the key thing. Would that be bringing in more overseas speakers Ideally, in those yeah. quarters? Yeah, I mean, look, it's expensive so to bring some... So that's an invitation. <laughs> yeah. If you want to come speak, come speak. Exactly, yeah. It is expensive to do that, but I think if we find the right kind of people to work with, we could definitely bring out one or two people per quarter. Or that's if, you, if you're on just travelling to South Africa yeah, on well, your I mean, own that's, steam. That's even easier. Yeah. <laughs> you just show them pictures of Cape Town and the bush and they... And they're in. They're in, yeah. I know that the speakers have had an amazing time due to your hospitality and your team's hospitality and they think they really have enjoyed Cape Town and looking forward to Botswana. So congrats on, on offering the full South African gumboot dancing experience yeah. too. Just with regard to startups and the message that you would give to them, yeah. um, you know, we've, we've all learned so much in this space. Um, and over the past two days. What key learning can you give to those people that haven't been able to attend? The, the first thing would be don't give up. The second thing would forget about the critics. And, and I think, you know, if, if I had have listened to critics about Tech for Africa, we, we wouldn't be here. And if, if Joe Stump had have listened to critics about the stuff that he's done, he wouldn't have scaled Dig and then he wouldn't have built Simple Geo. So I think it's about not listening to the critics when you feel something is right. Obviously, if you feel that it's not right and there's something you know, not quite there, then there's a reason for that. Yeah. But if you feel passionate about something, to, to, to go and do it. Um, the only person that's holding you back is, is yourself. You know, one of the companies I saw at Seedcamp, um, they, they've got a great product and they're making money and they're profitable. But it's, it's their own kind of internal Dialogue, thinking that's yeah. holding them back from becoming a global company. And I said, guys, well, why? And they're like, well, we don't see what you see. And I said, well, that's clear because you've been sitting in a room with two people yeah. 
for the last year and a half and all you've got is your own kind of dialogue between the two of you. You need to expose yourself to... And we can because we've got technology. I mean, exactly. it's right here. Yeah. You say per perhaps the biggest disadvantage to us is, is our own self-limiting beliefs, um, or, or particularly to engineers and developers that have got a product that they want to push out. Do you think that Africans should be developing for a local market, or do you think they should be thinking global? I think that the idea of building a tech product at the moment where you, you generate all of your revenue from South Africa or from Africa is flawed because it's very difficult to make enough money to run a company unless you already are a big company. So I think you have to be looking global. I do think, however, when you achieve a level of scale... Is that global for finance or global for, for the actual product delivery, what your service is? Yeah, global for the products or service. You know, there's a difference between a Let's say there's a mobile product that goes throughout Africa. We haven't yet seen one of those. We've seen a few of them that are starting to emerge, but they haven't yet grown massively. Mm. Whereas something like Twitter is ubiquitous, right? Everybody knows about it, everybody uses it. Now, in my mind, the only thing that's holding uh, somebody back from getting a Twitter done in Africa is, is their thinking. Mm. Because Twitter is fundamentally a simple, very easy to use product. It's a good product. That's why people use it. Why couldn't that be built here? Mm. And yes, we don't have enough bandwidth and they're using insane amounts of data, but like, you know, it could be started here and then you could go to San Francisco and set up an office there. You know, the point is, is that we, we, we say, oh, we can't do that. Is uh, that not a money thing though? No. I think, I think there's, a, there's a number of issues. One is, is that, you know, if, if you're in that part of the world, you have access to people who can help you. I mean, we don't we, have that we, we've seen Simple Geo move from Boulder into San Francisco now because they need to be closer. Yeah. So that is true, right? But. That doesn't mean that people can't build products and then take them to those cities, like go to San Francisco. Like, you know, I, I see guys in London where they build great products, you raise a bit of money and then you go to San Francisco because that's where the, the people are. Yeah, and, and, and that's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I think the idea is that people think that we can't originate ideas and products here, mm. but mm. we can. There's plenty of money around. The problem is that we don't have good enough products. Mm. And that's what I think we need to change is that, that, that the hand, the, sorry, the, the mindset should be how do I build the best product, not how do I raise money for my product. Because if you build the best product, you'll get money. Yeah. It, it, it sounds very simple, but it's, it's, it's alarming how many people don't get that. They just don't build good products. And so, of course, you're not going to get funding. Yeah. So, I think, yeah, that's the, I think for me the key message is, is build great products.